everybody, come on in. My name is Deborah. I'm here doing the uh, Married at First Sight season 15, episode eight recap. And this recap is going to be for Nate and Stasha. And I do separate videos on all the couples, but this one right here, we going to talk about uh, Nate and Stasha. And y'all know I like this couple, but I'm going to tell Stasha, as I tell you, girl, don't play your hand too tough. Don't play your hand uh, too tough because she over here putting a uh, pressure on Nate for this baby. First of all, um, Sasha, you the one that's 37. He got a lot of runway in his age. So don't play your hand so tough that you don't realize that you're getting a good deal with Nate at 34. And don't play your hand so tough to know that him having a baby I sooner than he expected is a big a dot deal. Just because you got money and you're talking about I can pay for the baby, I don't know that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You still are pressuring him to go into a situation sooner than he would want to do it if he were just on his own. And she need to recognize this because you know what happens to women when they come in with a good hand, which Sasha has a good hand, but they got some weaknesses in their hand. And what they do is uh, they play their hand too tough because they act like they don't have no weaknesses. Uh, Sasha at 37, let me tell you, uh, her biological clock is ticking and it's ticking loud. Let's just be honest. It's ticking and it's ticking loud. This is equivalent to a person saying, um, I'm giving you a 90 day notice to move out this apartment. When you get ready to go look for apartments and you don't have the luxury of always just taking your time because you got a 90 day eviction notice and you're gonna have to be out in 90 days. Uh, that's Sasha. Now, of course, you could not take any apartment. You ain't gotta take any man that comes along, but then you left with two options. Your eggs are gonna be homeless, which means there ain't gonna be a no man at all, or you're gonna end up selling from an apartment you don't really want. So, Sasha, she got a good hand, but don't play your hand too tough. And she actually should understand what Nate is doing when he's trying to vet her as a mother. Not, Nate has a trauma behind his mama. He said, I ain't even seen that Sasha with no kids. How I know she's going to be a good mother? How do I know she ain't going to abandon her babies I like my mama abandoned me? He's got trauma behind it, and Sasha's not giving it any credence. Just like a woman who had a bad father might want to get extra scrutiny to a man to make sure he's not going to be the father she had. He wants to make sure she won't be the mother to his kids like his mother was to him and abandoned him. Nate, Nate has been very accommodating on a lot of things. The prenup, the going to therapy, where they live. Uh, Stasha even mentioned uh, she might want to move out of San Diego. All these things Nate has agreed to. He has agreed to you keeping his last name uh, no matter what if you get divorced. Uh, he has agreed to move into your apartment. He has agreed to a prenup. He has agreed to therapy. And as soon as he agrees to one thing, here goes Stasha coming up with another I think she needs him to agree to. And then she tells him, and I saw the previews, um, when, I'm not going to say yes on the decision day unless you told me uh, you love me. Uh, Stasha is creating an ironclad contract in which all the benefits go to her and then I'm going to go to Nate. I don't like when people do this. This might be good in business when you you draft a contract so you're fully insulated, you're fully protected, and then a person reads it and go, wait a minute, you're the one protected, but I'm not. That's what she's doing to Nate. She's fully protected and she's leaving Nate exposed. But of all the parties, y'all, I think I like Sasha and Nate's party the best. I, their party looked like fun. Their party looked relaxed. Their party looked like a lot of fun. Everybody um, seemed like they were having a good time. Other people's parties had drama and tension going on. But what I liked about um, Nate and Sasha's party, it did look relaxed. Oh, yeah, Miguel and Lindy's party, it looked like they all had some fun, too, until Lindy started talking about the whole um, give me health care or um, I ain't going to love you. I don't know. But anyway, their party actually looked like fun. They did the whole Soul Train line or whatever else they were doing, the line dance, whatever they were doing. It looked like a really good time. And uh, all the pictures Nate was taking on the honeymoon and stuff, I guess they came in handy, Sasha. Everybody was uh, mad about Nate taking all these pictures. 
But guess what? Uh, the pictures came in handy because y'all had a whole photo album to show everybody. And people were like, dang, all these pictures look like y'all been married for years with all these pictures. I uh, thank you, Nate. Go ahead and say a thank you, Nate. But I like Nate's friends. I mean, they really were giving Sasha some really good advice, especially that friend that was telling her, you know what? Hey, you know, he came from a father with a militant father from the military. Plus, his mother wasn't around. These are the kind of things that women need to start considering. Sometimes people react just based off their own emotions, and they actually don't consider people's uh, people's past. And, uh, and then maybe that may make you understand the way they react to things. If Sasha had just given a little bit of understanding to the fact that Nate was abandoned by his mother, uh, maybe he would understand about not trying to rush into having a child with a woman. <laughs> maybe she would understand that. Maybe she would understand how big of a leap it is to have a baby with a with with a woman. Like I said last week, I want to see some areas where Sasha is giving, and I don't want to just be about I'm giving because he's moving into my house. No, I want to hear some concessions by Sasha because Nate said he's a giver, and we already seen he giving in the uh, category. I uh, did she return favor, Nate? Did she return the favor? You went downtown. Did she go downtown? And another thing, I don't even, you know people, you think going downtown is easier than the actual intercourse. That's a whole new thing. My generation, it was the flip. But anyway, uh, the, the downtown stuff came after the intercourse. So, um, but they said, you know, he done had his dessert. He's happy. I guess it tastes good. But I hope Sasha ain't gonna be one of these women where she takes, 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 takes and doesn't give and doesn't reciprocate. I really hope that she's not gonna be this type of woman. Uh, she looked like she was having some fun on the uh, at the party. She was dancing, she was laughing. They really do look comfortable together. I'm still really excited about this couple, but I definitely would hope that part of Sasha's uh, plan for herself is to make sure she's not constantly in the gimme, gimme, gimme mode and this is the criteria and the contract isn't completely in her favor, but she also tries to look at the needs of Nate and make sure she tries to fulfill those needs for him too. And I hope he starts speaking up for himself without blowing up. We saw a preview of next week where he looks like he gets a little bit testy over it and he pushes back. It's gonna be interesting to see that when he does push back on uh, Sasha, how does she react? Does she get riled up or does she recognize, wow, maybe I went a little bit too far? I hope it's the latter. I hope she realizes I might have pushed too much. I, I might need to be comfortable with the wins that I have so far and back off a little bit. But we'll see. Anyway, what y'all think of this couple uh, this week? Leave your comments uh, down below in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe and watch the videos on the other couples. Talk to you later. Bye.